Pompeo tried to get the um, OAS, mm -hmm. which is the Organization of American States, mm -hmm. uh, to sanction this coup and go and get behind this pretend president of Venezuela, and they didn't. They didn't go along. That's what this is about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they didn't go along. And then um, United States is ready to provide urgent humanitarian aid to the people of Venezuela. Yeah, after holding it back to blackmail the population <laughs> of Venezuela. Also, not to mention the economic sanctions that the U.S. imposed on Venezuela prior to the coup. So that's what they're... See, that's the part, that's the part they tell you. This is the part they don't leave. They, they leave out. Uh, and here's what Bernie said. The Maduro government has waged a violent crackdown on Venezuelan civil society. So let's just stop there. Uh, why is he saying that? Because he's wishy-washy as hell right now. What the f What is this doesn't help anybody? You it responded was, to him, didn't you, Mike? I, I did yeah, because, did. um, yeah, because it's, there's two fallacies there. I mean, one is that the violent crackdown on peaceful protests, just not true. Um, and if you look at the deaths, the majority of them were caused by opposition protesters. Um, and so in armed clashes, you would expect uh, deaths to be on both sides. But then also this idea that he that Maduro unconstitutionally dissolved the National Assembly and replaced it with his own pro Maduro. Which assembly. they can compare to like Congress, like oh he dissolved Congress. That's right. like what they say. It's absolutely untrue. I mean, when the national when the opposition won the National Assembly in 2015, which mind you was the first election that the opposition won since 19 like 95. They they were they were smashed in every Democratic election year after year after year, and they have elections about once a year. Um, the first time they went take a majority, get a victory in an election, 2015. From that point they were acted like the corporations in the u.s says they tried to sabotage the government they refused to function that was the job of the national assembly the job of the national assembly is to pass laws right do you know how many laws they've passed since 2015 zero they refused to they refused to function in a, as a government so governing they're body. like almost like the republican opposition exactly. to obama yeah. exactly and so and they were actually in contempt of court they were violating the constitution by being an abstentionist a national assembly and so that's what's left out of it it was it was unconstitutional their actions were unconstitutional it wasn't unconstitutional to um you know try to circumvent their sabotage yeah the supreme court of and Venezuela then he said he was real that said he was re-elected in an election many observers said was fraudulent now i know that's bullshit right that it, go ahead you can answer it i mean they've had again dozens of elections in the last 20 years jimmy carter center a couple of years ago said it was the freest and fairest elections in the world in the jimmy carter center monitors elections now when I tell people that they're like that was a couple years ago but there's been an authoritarian <laughs> crackdown in the last couple years that's not true there's international observers that come all over the world to monitor these elections last year a hundred polling centers were attacked by opposition mobs that's how much they were trying to make people scared to not vote. Right. Um, but yeah, I know people. Dan Kavalik went and observed the election. I mean, heads it's of just former simply, heads of state it's just went simply the election. not true. I mean, true. It's, there's zero reports of. And so, sorry. Yeah, no, that's it. And so he's just every sentence here is wrong. Yeah, yeah it's like he had to. And just, so this is what mm -hmm. the fuck, right? What right. is? I I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's why I told him. I said you need to strongly, strongly condemn unequivocally condemn this bernie no mealy mouth oh de -de 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 -de. no where is your condemnation about what trump's doing and i didn't see that at all tulsi, and i was extremely disappointed tulsi gabbard got it tulsi right tulsi gabbard got it right she was yeah. the first one out there yeah. getting it right Absolutely. well first of all let me good see. for her ben norton says this is a very bad statement talking about bernie yeah Venezuela's U.S.-backed opposition has waged relentless war against the state, burning chavistas, looting buildings, bombing police, attacking the Supreme Court, and the opposition keeps boycotting elections. It wants a coup, not elections. And so I go, so you go, oh, well, Bernie doesn't know that. Why the, what? what does Bernie have a bunch of uh, eighth graders working for him? <laughs> All, everybody who works for him has got gray hair or is bald. They're, they're old. They know stuff. <laughs> they've been around. They've been reading. You're not informing Bernie, or are you just going to just do bullshit? The whole reason why people like Bernie is because he's not a bullshitter. And so now this is bullshit. That, that, this is bullshit. And this is his staff telling him to do bullshit. And if you notice the last part of his statement, someone was like, oh, you didn't see the third out of third tweet, like three out of three. I was like, no, I did. It's fucking bullshit because he doesn't even mention the coup that the U.S. fomented in Venezuela in 2002. He's like, we must not go down the road that we did. And so know. he does say, yeah, so I don't have that third, but he does say we shouldn't do the do this. Right. But it was it was like kind of but like, let's not, he's like, let's not go down that road again. It's like, well, we're going down it right now. Right now we're doing all. it. And also, guess what? They, it already happened in 2002. So you missed that in your list. Right. So there's a lot of problems here with Bernie's statement. I think I what I would say to him, I really would urge him 
to go to Venezuela because right. I truly believe that Bernie believes that we can build a mass movement of young people who want free health care, jobs for all, all of these great progressive things. If he went to Venezuela, he would see that that movement he dreams about having here is, is the Chavista movement in Venezuela. And that for him to say Maduro is terrible and is doing all these bad things, it's like him saying that about his own movement here. You know, it's, it's the same struggle. Uh, there's the worker struggle has no borders. And so fighting for the rights of workers and poor people to be in power in Venezuela is fighting for the rights of, of workers and poor people to be in power here in the United States, uh, which which I know he wants. And so I know that if he saw it with his own eyes like we did, he would not be subject. You know, he wouldn't be susceptible to the kind of propaganda about what's happening because he would meet the people and see that the, the poor and working masses are not just pro government, but like active everyday participants uh, in the democratic movement. There, Propaganda is a hell of a drug. <laughs> so and here, I think Bernie is susceptible to that, too. Here's Tulsi oh. Gabbard's statement. The United States needs to stay out of Venezuela. Let the Venezuelan people determine their future. We don't want another. We don't want other countries to choose our leaders. So we have to stop trying to choose theirs. That that's that's what I would like to have heard Bernie say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Instead. And here's Nancy Pelosi. Oh Americans. My good God. America stands by the people of Venezuela. That gives you a double CK <laughs> as they rise up against authoritarian rule and demand respect for human rights and democracy. That's just a copy and paste, by the way. Yeah. She just has that, and she's like, oh, is it Venezuela this time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just put that What's the hashtag? This hashtag group? What is it? Okay, Siri? Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. Um, How fucking dare her? It's like, she's, it's the same, like, the person who, I you may have talked about this earlier on your show, but she's taking credit for ending the government shutdown, and all the liberal press- And they're giving it to her. And saying, Nancy won, she, and like, like, cartoons of her stomping over Donald Trump. It was the workers. It was the public workers yes. who went on rallies, threatened to go on strike, that forced the government to end the shutdown. It wasn't Nancy fucking Pelosi. <laughs> so it's the same thing with Venezuela, to like, take the side of the rich capitalist business owners versus acknowledge that workers and poor people exist and have like a political voice she did the same thing with the shutdown uh she's 100 percent corrupt and that's why uh we need to get in the streets and people who think they're gonna and again i, I it doesn't bring me any joy uh you know my friend jenk uger is doing a valiant job uh pushing progressives with the justice democrats and cal kalinsky is too they're both very good friends um, but I think what we got to focus on is now getting out in the streets because I don't think electoral politics, while important, it's not it it doesn't provide a path to the change we need because we need change immediately. And all electoral politics is providing us is incremental change. And we and as Ron Placone says, there's nothing pragmatic about an incremental solution to a catastrophic problem. And we're living in the middle of a catastrophic problem right now. And electoral politics is incremental change. And we need people like Ocasio Cortez and Bernie and Tulsi to tell people to get in the fucking streets and we got to shut shit down and get Medicare for all because the Democrats are standing in the way of Medicare for all. The Democratic Party needs to fucking go away. That's the problem. Not the Republicans. There's always going to be Republicans. What we need is an opposition party, and we haven't had one since fucking 1992. Wait, you don't want um, you want people to have health care, so you, you don't want people to get arrested for trying to get their friend's son's like strep throat medication, like that woman who was just yeah. fucking arrested <laughs> in Elwood, Indiana, for trying to help someone survive? I didn't hear about this. Yes. What happened? Yeah, superintendent of Elwood, Indiana. Um, this kid was missed school. She went to his house. He had strep throat, went to a clinic. He was denied at this one clinic because he doesn't have insurance. She then went to another clinic and and said she was... Uh, he was her son. He's mm -hmm. my son. And he got health care, and then they arrested her. She has like a <laughs> mugshot and everything. Yeah, they, that's and that's the thing. The USA Today put this mugshot, like the one the one you would do for a teacher that like slept with a kid or beat somebody or is fucking dealing drugs on campus. That's what they made the woman. I'm giving health care. I'm giving health care. <laughs> Strep throat, which uh, I has don't know. serious complications and consequences if it's not taken care yeah. of. Yeah. So and. Yeah, and you're and you're the cop who arrests that. That's the same cop who arrested <laughs> Roseanne Park, uh, Ro Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same cop. Mm -hmm. That's how cops think. Just mm -hmm. so you fucking know. <laughs> yeah, uh, a beautiful country we live in. My dad was a cop. We had this conversation, and I told him, I said, Dad, how do you how do you arrest people for drugs when you fucking smoke cigarettes and you drink? And uh, he's like, well, it's not for me to decide. It's for the judge. I go, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you would have said if for, to Rosa Parks. I bet you would have said that to Rosa Parks. And I knew I fucking had him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, no, I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> fucking got you. At least he admitted it. Right. Uh, but that's how cops think. And I know how cops think. I lived with them my whole life. 
Uh, so then this guy comes back to Bernie. Actually, none of the observers that went there, including the U.N., said that the elections were fraudulent. It was the U.S. who sent no observers and the opposition who refused to participate who claimed that. As a matter of fact, the opposition begged the U.N. not mm-hmm. to send observers, mm-hmm. as you pointed yep. out. Yep. All right. So there. hopefully we got you through all your bullshit propaganda. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's not hard, by the way. It's not hard. Just whatever the government's saying, just assume the opposite is true <laughs> and then go from there. And there's a fallacy of using Venezuelans as like a crutch to be like, well, I have Venezuelan friends and they told me this. Well, guess what? There's a lot of fucking Trump people that I don't agree with that are yeah. also Americans. Yes. <laughs> and we have different interests. The day drinker <laughs> just said on CBS, they reported that... Um, interviewed uh, a Venezuelan claiming people are dying of hunger. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that there are people who are extremely living in object po- poverty that are like I don't want to like paint that off and be like no one's, you know, having any problems with hunger no one's or dying malnourishment. Of hunger. Yeah, it's just it's not. Yeah. Well, it's a, it would imagine if if the depiction of America was only um, the people sleeping under bridges, yeah, right. Skid right. Row, right. and then you know the this tr- is in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah. Downtown Los Angeles, people are sleeping on the streets in in the United States now, and then Charleston, you know that just massive race riots every day. There's constant race riots. Imagine if that's the only depiction you saw of America. Every mass shootings. Right. Well, we have those every day. Right. Which is every street. There's mass shootings and homeless people and showing someone picking out of the trash. See Americans. It's completely collapsed, and that's what they're doing. People, uh, people love to say, see, socialism doesn't work. Look at Venezuela. I go, 30 million Americans don't have fucking health care. What do you call that? That's a failed system. Our system has fucking failed. And the thing is, it is working in Venezuela. I mean, despite the fact that there's been an economic crisis, and it has been hard, ex- social services have only been expanding since 99 when Travis came in. The people that want to take power now, they were in charge up until 99. We know what society in Venezuela looks like when the pro-capitalist, U.S.-backed people are in charge. Po- extreme poverty was like 25%. Now it's like like around 5%. I mean, the, the extreme poverty and poverty both dropped. Literacy was, was massive and it was completely eradicated in the country. College attendance like multiplied by 10. People, kids in school multiplied like by 10. That's, that's happening since 99 and it's continuing to happen even though they've had to make uh, even though their their GDP is falling, all these things, they still expanded all of the rights and benefits for poor and working class people. That has continued to go forward and continue to expand. And so you can look at the society that the opposition wants. It was a complete fucking disaster and failure when there was real poverty and hunger and misery there. Now, I mean, if you just anyone can look at the numbers, it's been dramatically everyone uh, who is a working class person, their life has been dramatically improved by the Bolivarian Revolution. Um, and so the people, that's why they're the most popular in the, the poor and working class areas. But people have pointed to since 2015, people on average, they say, have lost on average like 20, 15, 20 pounds. And we um, and it, they call it the Maduro diet. And so this is a thing with um, when the oil prices really plummeted, um, food became more scarce, scarce. And again, sanctions exacerbate the hell out of that. And so, of course, formula, you know, things that are that do help the nutrition of newborn babies and stuff. Of course, that's going to be harder to find. Look at Iraq. Look at the genocidal sanctions there that killed 500,000 babies. So you can't uncouple those things. But, yeah, I don't want to paint it with a broad brush and be like, no one is having any problems. There's obviously severe problems. But again, we cannot isolate that without understanding how the U.S. is fomenting this. And the last, you know, like I, we go through downtown Los Angeles every day, and I see like grinding poverty and desperation, yes. like absolute misery. When I was in Venezuela, I w- we went to the opening of a new apartment complex. They've built two million brand new homes for poor people in Venezuela, and we went to a ceremony where they were giving out keys to all these poor families, hundreds of poor families coming up and celebrating and getting the key to their new home. And the places were like nice. These were like nice ass apartments with like TVs in them big flat screens, things like that. That's what's happening there. So like to con- even, so for people to tell me how like miserable, whatever it is, they're like, I see misery here. F- I didn't see the type of homelessness in Venezuela that I see here. In fact, they have the lowest homeless rate in all of Latin America, Venezuela. But here in the United States, you know, I've got 200,000 homeless people just like in our like right. radius of where we live. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Um, you know, you, you don't have to go downtown L.A. They're under every right. bridge. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Pasadena, they're under bridges in Pasadena now. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. you go. I was at the west side yesterday. I had to go do a thing on the west. And the, in freaking Culver City, they're underneath bridges. And then, it's unbelievable. Oh, Venice Beach. A friend of mine says, so it's like guy shooting, shooting you know, heroin into his arm, uh, you know, in Venice. 
Like you, I, again, so this is our this is the capitalist capitalist uh, success story, Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah these are capitalist success stories. Well, I want to remind everybody, uh, Empire Files you, on YouTube. Yes, and Media Roots Radio on SoundCloud. But yeah, Empire Files on YouTube. Subscribe. Go to at Empire Files on Twitter to get all our clips of Venez the Valens Venezuelans we're talking about. We're not speaking for Venezuelans. We're relaying what they told us, and so you can hear their voices there too. And Eyes Left Podcast. Eyes Left Podcast is an anti-war soldiers and military podcast. We're announcing our live dates for 2019. We're going to Chicago and Portland, Seattle, New York, all over the country. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all our tickets to all our shows. It'll be right underneath there, too. Please become a patron if you like our content and help support the show. You can become a patron for $5 a month, and we give you hours of bonus material. And make sure you're subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I'm not kidding. Make sure you're subscribed and click that bell so they give you a notice when we drop a video. It's the only thing we can do to fight back against the bastards. Thanks for your support.